Hi, everyone. I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with four members of the Oscar-nominated sound team from the retro-futuristic sci-fi action thriller, The Creator, supervising sound editors and sound designers Eric Adol and Ethan Vanderein, sound mixer Ian Voigt, and re-recording mixer Tom Ozanich. Welcome, gentlemen. Uh, Eric and Ethan, I know you both have worked uh, with your director, Gareth Edwards, before on Godzilla in 2014. Uh, what were your early discussions like with him in terms of how he was hoping the sonic techniques you used might differ from what you did in Godzilla? Was it the plan with the creator to produce it more kind of guerrilla style, if you will? Let's start with you, Eric. Um, yeah, our very first conversations with Gareth about the creator actually started, I'd say, about six years ago um, when uh, the film uh, had not yet been greenlit. Uh, he was still developing it, working on the script. And he described this sort of combination of uh, on-location docu-realism with high-concept sci-fi. And... Uh, you know, when we first met on on Godzilla, his favorite movies of all time um, were some of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Blade Runner was one of them, uh, but also uh, Terrence Malick films, which I've also worked on several, like uh, The Tree of Life and uh, and the movie Baraka. So he was talking about combining his favorite genres from those different styles into one kind of epic uh, epic movie. Uh, but he really, having gone through an, an, a very independent guerrilla style experience on his first movie, and then going to a big budget uh, Hollywood studio film on his next couple of movies, uh, he realized that there was another way to approach it all, which was to shoot guerrilla style, but then use all of this sort of technology to make it into what looks like a $300 million movie. Uh, but but isn't so sonically he he wanted to combine that sort of realism the sounds actual sounds of nature uh, you know which we recorded in Cambodia and Vietnam Laos uh, and Thailand uh, with um, the very high tech end of what sound design can do and kind of have this whole spectrum of sound um, from uh, sci-fi to realistic. And you mentioned the term retrofuturism, which uh, we can also talk about. <laughs> right, you no, know, it was uh, so interesting. I've heard you in previous interviews too, where you're talking about, you know, the fact that that uh, maybe 90% of the budget went into post instead of uh, the opposite, instead of the other way around uh, for this. Um, um, e Ethan, wasn't the idea with the, that Gareth had for the creator to basically to reinvent the way movies like this are made. Yeah, you know, definitely you, um, th that was very clearly the case on the visual side where, you know, it was shot, you know, guerrilla style in, in these different countries, you know, on real locations with real people. And you feel that, you feel the, the, the authenticity um, visually. And so sonically, we wanted to do something similar where everything is, uh, is always very grounded in in reality um and feels very real and yet we have this this layer of of you know technology which doesn't exist which we had to sort of create from scratch and figure out a way to fuse this this uh imagined future technology with uh with the natural world um, as well as, you know, real organic elements that that actually exist. And then also with the retro technology part of it, so that, you know, voices get get treated in all a whole combination combination of of different ways. Um, so sometimes they feel almost low tech and then sometimes they're super high tech. And and Tom, you know, did an amazing job. Um, it was an incredible amount of work with the voices of all these different characters, robots um, of all different varieties to to get the voices to sort of uh, represent this whole range of technology. And, and Tom can speak more to that part of it. 
Yeah, Tom. Um, well, first off, you know, we also we also have uh, it was an eighty million dollar feature, I believe. That uh, you know, now we're in the era where it can, we can see that as a low budget. <laughs> you know, <laughs> compared to the two hundred fifty and three hundred million dollar uh, epics that we've seen before. But yeah, Tom, can you talk about you know the idea that you know we always think of robots as beep, 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 you know and and those and you know basically a collection of noises and here here we you know you guys were tasked with kind of trying to make them sound almost human and compassionate. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the the you know interesting things that you know what at the core of this movie right is is the relationship between alfie and joshua and and there's this blurring of lines between humanity and the ai of of alfie and you know in, in many ways alfie takes on this you know more human than some of the humans characteristics and stuff and so you know that was a uh critical part of the movie that we wanted to protect um and so you know we played around with different ideas about processing some of the ai characters you know alfie uh, as well as some of the others and ultimately you know we're kind of thinking that you know in in those particular cases they're like so advanced that you know they've gotten to the point where we we can't really tell the difference between humans and that level of technology meanwhile you know we have several other levels that you know are sort of older technology within the context of the movie uh that don't have that level you know that like even to the point where there's the the police that you know we we don't understand you know they're they're speaking a made-up language and um and then there's you know various things in between where we've got you know, robots that are processed and and whatever they're they're speaking English, we can understand them, but they're clearly robotic. Um, and so, you know, it, it literally every single robot, every you know, sort of treatment is unique to that character. Um, and so we end up with a lot of different ones. Um, but we wanted to really utilize the whole retro future thing that we played with in the, in the movie as a whole. And so a lot of that processing is vocoders and analog saturation techniques and different things to, to kind of play that, you know, old feeling without, uh, you know, without losing intelligibility or anything. And, you know, it's a, it's a funny thing because you have to process it enough that it sounds like, you know, it's a deliberate thing that you're trying to do because if you're just if you don't process it enough, it just sounds like it's messed up and it's not right, and you don't know why. Um. So yeah, there's uh, I would say this is probably the most complicated dialogue movie I've ever done in terms of all the different treatments and things that are going on. You know, and we always want it to feel real. We want to feel like that that character is a real character right there in front of us so and, of and because you weren't just you know you're in so many exotic locations you're not just in the usual studio back lot and green screen you know you're you're in uh, i guess primarily thailand but as you were mentioning vietnam laos nepal cambodia what are the are there differences in each region in terms of catch capturing natural sound i mean did that is that did that add a lot to the sonics of the film um maybe a Ian, if I can get you to chime in on that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, look, when I first met Gareth, he, he explained how he wanted to do this film, which is uh, with, that, with a huge crew, the cameras were going to be DSLRs, FX300s, um, over to you type of thing. And I realised I needed to have a small package, so I sort of did the whole reinventing the wheel with a new with the lightest possible stuff because basically i ended up doing the whole film handheld um so that's how i kind of from the beginning i realized that it was going to be you know everything was shot on location and it's it's never easy because gareth also loves the idea of um having people naturally talking in the background of stuff and there's quite a few scenes like that in the with MR and 
Ken and the commander uh, in the house. Um, and he had them cooking and talking in the background. It was also, you know, as a as a sound man, you 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 used to sort of say, "Well, hang on, can't they just mime and we'll fix it?" You know, no, 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 no. He wanted to feel and and those are the kind of things that um, were were so interesting about doing the film. And basically, everywhere we went was so far and so remote. You know, it would there was just a wealth of. Um, ambiences and stuff but we didn't we know we never had time to really settle down in, in any location because we moved so fast it was so fast moving um and whatever we got was what we got um there wasn't second chances for me to go back to any of the locations because we we were on the move all the time North, south, east, west. Uh, yes, it wasn't it was, like you, you you could settle set down roots and act like you're in a resort. You're always on the and and and, and you you can't you're not exactly tourists in these countries. Oh my God, no, 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 no. Uh, it, uh, I have to say it was it was pretty it was grueling but very rewarding at the same time. I you know I I've said to the guys I I'm, I've changed that that way of filmmaking has changed the way I I look at everything now. It can be done better. And much more economically, and also from my point of view, I was always the guy stuck, you know, a hundred yards away, and and I hated that. And being much closer to the action and with with you know with the artists and interacting was so much more rewarding for me, um, in terms of what we we were trying to achieve. Um, Eric and Ethan, I, you had a sound team of I think thirty two people according to IMDB. How do you organize and divide up the work with that many that many Sonic uh, people on your staff? Hey, I only had two guys. <laughs> <laughs> Did we really have 32? Wow. No, I, that, that's what, according to IMDB, it. which is sometimes you can take with a grain of salt. That, that, yeah, might, in, that might include um, a, a lot of, you know, there were a number of ADR stages and we had extensive group ADR in multiple languages, Hindi and Thai and Vietnamese. and. So there were, we were kind of all over the world in post-production, mixing on uh, eight different stages, which is a record for us. Um, we spent a portion of our final mix uh, in London and also out here in Los Angeles. So that might explain the big number. Um, the core of the team, though, was pretty tight. We had kind of, we considered it more like SEAL Team 6. And uh, uh, Malta Beeler was our lead sound designer. Um, who uh, we can give a huge amount of credit for him for creating some of the sounds of Nomad, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, David Bach was the ADR dialogue supervisor and headed the dialogue team. And he's he's amazing. He's, he's worked with us on Michael Bay movies and he's done a bunch of Christopher Nolan films. And he said this was the most complicated dialogue, echoing what Tom said, the, the most complicated dialogue uh, film he's ever worked on. Uh, just because of the complexities that we've discussed. Um, but uh, but it, it was pr a very tight team. And uh, Ethan and I kind of like that because there's a, um, uh, when you have a tight post-production sound team, there is a uh, uh, kind of secondhand, you don't need to explain everything. You kind of intuitively know what you're going for and, and uh uh, you can work much more quickly and more limberly, um, which is kind of critical on a movie as complex as this. Just the sound design alone on this film, uh, it was was monumental task for all of us. So, you guys. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, just, thank God it was a low cast count. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd still be doing it. We yeah, would never have right. finished. <laughs> you, you, you guys truly make sound a central character in the film, which I'm sure is why you get hired a lot uh, and have 16 Oscar nominations between the four of you uh, and, and a couple of wins. But I would think having your sound come through as distinctive without being obtrusive is sometimes a difficult balance to strike, Ethan. Yeah, you know, I... Absolutely, because the, the one of the really interesting things about sound is, um, you know, mostly when it get, gets noticed, it gets noticed because there's something wrong with it. 
So when we're doing our work, you know, at its peak and when we're really successful, you know, it's not so much noticed as as felt, you know, because it's so integrated in with the storytelling and with the environments and with the tone that as an audience member, you're sort of sucked into it and it becomes an experience that you go with. And so it's not so much as like, oh, this, this, this sound like it's, you know, it's, it's, it's more like a feeling that comes. Um, and it's hopefully for us, we want it to be something that, 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 that sticks with you and that resonates with you in a way that, you know, an hour later, a day later, a week later, you're going to be thinking and, and still feeling like, wow, that was an experience. That was a, that was a journey that I went on. So, you know, for us, we're always, when, when we first start working, we're wanting to create a feeling in ourself of surprise and, and delight in a way we want to, um, you know, one of the things we love about working with Gareth is that he was always saying to us like, okay, in any given moment, there's like many different choices that you could make. And like, I always want to be making the most dangerous choice, the most, you know, the, the most unexpected choice. And, and you know, for Eric and I, um, when we're working in the studio, that's what we want to do with each other is we want to surprise each other and surprise ourselves. Um, and we want to, we want to get to a place where, where we feel goosebumps. Um, and so that, that, that way of working sort of <laughs> meshed perfectly with the rest of the team and with Gareth in particular, because that, that's like how he was guiding us. So, um, yeah. And I think, you know, something to jump in, I think, you know, a lot of times there's ideas that there's, you know, at the most basic core, right, there's these three different departments, dialogue, music and effects. And, and then there's kind of like, well, you know, sometimes a little bit of battle between the, the different elements in terms of what you hear and screen time and whatever. And in, you know, I've done a number of movies now with Eric and Ethan. And one of the things that I love about our collaboration and, you know, what we're doing is we're always really just trying to make the movie better. You know, we're just trying to serve the, what, Eric, what Ethan is talking about, the, the feeling, the experience of the movie, you're going on a ride, you're going on a journey and it doesn't really matter. There's, you know, only the movie wins, you know, none of the elements win, you know, unless the movie wins. And so um, that's what I think has been so great, you know, in this movie is a perfect example of how, you know, we've got times when it's, it's very sort of more, effects heavy and times when it's more music heavy and but that's not because there's some you know battle between it it's literally everybody going you know what is the best thing here what's the most interesting thing here what's the most you know emotive and motivating thing here and you know there's there's nothing too precious you know it's it all has to serve the whole and I was just going to say, you know, because I knew I was going to be talking to you guys, you know, I when I was watching the creator, I was listening more than as much as or more than watching to for the sounds. And it really you can it, I really can tell the difference between, you know, pros like you working on a film and, and an ordinary group of, of sonic sonic, you know, designers and mixers. It has so many different levels of richness to it. I mean, it, you know, uh, your uh, your Oscar nominations are, are very much uh, deserved for uh, for what you brought to this film. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, I think um, actually we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap things there. Uh, the creator is streaming over Hulu. Eric, Ethan, Ian, and Tom. 
Best of luck at the Academy Awards on March 10th. And uh, thanks for joining us at Gold Derby. Thank thanks you. For, thanks for listening. Thanks so much. <laughs> thanks, Ray. <laughs> Guys, enjoy your time.